Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Amazon Kindle Fire, which is a 7-inch tablet that comes with a version of Google Android that's custom designed by Amazon to interact with Amazon's uh, App Store, Music Store, uh, Movie Store, and Book Store. But if you don't like that, there are now a couple of different options available if you want to install custom software. We've already taken a look at Cyanogen Mod, but now there's something new called uh, MIUI, or M-I-U-I, and you install it much the same way. You need to root the tablet, replace the recovery and bootloader, and then flash the ROM. You can find instructions for doing that at lilliputing.com. And once you do that, here's what you get. So we've got a custom sort of lock screen here that looks a little phone-like, if you ask me, and a home screen that also looks kind of iPhone-like. There's no app drawer in order to see all of the applications that are installed. You just scroll from place to place. Every time you install a new application, it gets added to your home screen. But you also can add widgets, which is something that uh, iOS does not allow that's uh, particular to Android. Along the bottom we've got this dock and you can change the applications available in the dock and overall the apps, uh, the icons are kind of square uh, and you get this extra square bit added when you add applications that are not designed for Mew uh, such as the apps, Amazon App Store, Netflix apps and so forth. But you get these nice big icons for default apps like Gmail. This comes out of the box with access to the Google Android market so you just need to log in. Uh, you don't need to flash anything separate. It comes preloaded. And I've had no problems downloading and installing applications from the Android market. It also includes something to make up for the fact that there are no uh, physical home or back buttons here. Um, there's an app called Button Savior, which people have been using with the Kindle Fire for a while. And uh, it comes preloaded here. This is the free version of Button Savior, which means it's not customizable. You can uh, buy a pro version, which does let you choose which buttons show up here. Um, you can change the settings so that it'll disappear after a certain period of time so that uh, it gets out of the way. But basically, what you see here is a little sort of nub. You press it and you can get back, menu, home buttons, or view more options including search, camera, and phone, which aren't actually useful here. So from anywhere you can get to the home screen doing that. Um, go back and make it go away. Um, in terms of the notifications. You've got a, a custom skinned notification area here, but then there's also toggles, which is kind of nice. So you can turn on airplane mode, enable or disable screen rotation. There's some settings in here that are not actually applicable to the Kindle Fire right now, for instance, the data or Bluetooth or GPS, um, but you can do certain things like toggle the wireless or the uh, backlight display from here, and so that's a nice thing to be able to do. Also comes with a built-in file browser and it shows you how much space is free on the device. You can create folders with things like tools. We've got super user, a clock, and so forth. There's support for themes. And you can download additional themes. There's a custom music player in here. And audio and video, for the most part, are working. There are certain things that are still uh, b being developed. The, uh, the developer, for instance, knows that there are some issues with video, but he's working on fixing those. Um, this particular build, I would not try to uh, watch YouTube videos because it crashes when you do that. Uh, but that should actually be fixed very soon. And uh, by the time you're watching this video, it might even be fixed. Uh, I did have no problems, however, watching video from Netflix. So the Netflix application works pretty well. Um, so overall, seems fast, responsive. Uh, screen doesn't rotate here, but it does rotate if you're using a web browser or other application. Uh, video, audio, everything pretty much works. And in some ways, it's actually uh, further along, it feels like, than Cyanogen Mod 7, because the developers behind that, uh, well, the primary developer behind that, uh, kind of gave up and moved on to Cyanogen Mod Non, based on Google Android 4.0. Um, one thing that does bug me a little bit here, though, is the keyboard clearly does not seem to be designed for widescreen, larger tablets. Uh, it's sort of a phone size keyboard. It works reasonably well in portrait mode, um, but if you try to switch it to the landscape mode, it's a little bit tricky. Um, it also has a sort of weird visual look where you can see a little bit of the screen behind it. So since we have a white background here, we're seeing white behind it. And in the Netflix app, when I try to pull this up, I see red behind it. Um, but the web browsing experience is overall pretty good if you can type in what you're trying to type.
you know, right, there's a lot of pictures on that page, that's why it took a minute to load. Um, but yeah, so overall, it's a pretty usable ROM, and you can flash it using the TeamWin Recovery Project, and you can also back up your existing ROM. So if you're running the stock Amazon Android software, you can back it up before trying this out. Or if you're using Cyanogen Mod or something else, you can back it up before trying this out. And, um, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty neat. Um, it's not necessarily going to be everybody's taste because it's, uh, it does not necessarily have a complete Android look and feel. It's a little bit more iPhone-esque, but for some people uh, who like that, it's, it's a nice alternative to have, and it's very functional, even though it's just been released. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a quick look at Miu ROM for the Amazon Kindle Fire, and uh, you can find more information about it at lilliputing.com.